Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob, happy Friday. Welcome back to our Top 5 Fridays Ski Industry News videos. Um, before we get into the news, I thought we would just uh, say thank you to anybody that might be watching that came to our warehouse set last weekend. It was phenomenal. What, a, what an event. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of us had varying levels of expectations and mine were high mine were low and yeah. i was completely wrong i might be the only person who like my expectations were met yeah not exceeded yeah i think when we got here and i started setting up charlotte's lemonade stand at 7 30 and there were people starting to line up for a nine o'clock opening that's when it hit that's you. when i realized that it was going to be a day yeah, so, no, it was super fun. It was really nice to get to engage with uh, some of you. I know, like, there were people at the event that referenced Top 5 Fridays and were yep. like, welcome back, Jeff. I watched the show yesterday. It's great <laughs> to have you back from Whistler. And I was like, this is oh, weird. Like, <laughs> you know, when we're sitting yeah. here just talking to a camera, it's hard to imagine right. the person on the other side sometimes. Totally. So, yeah, thanks to anybody that made the trip. Um, and from our perspective, it was great, super successful. We kind of hit our goals, and one of those goals was just to engage with more of our customers and our audience. Yep. So it was fun. And a shout out to my daughter for raising $438 at her lemonade stand. Is that what she <laughs> yeah. did? She cleared $438. That's great. Yep. So. And that's all going to flood relief? Yeah, we just wrote a check to Vermont, you know, uh, yep. United Way of Lamoille County. So sweet. That goes to help anyone who's been. Did she try and negotiate for like her salary, her cut? She went into it with the understanding that it was all That's that it good. was all going. That's good. So, but I was I was real as much as impressed as I was with what went on here in the warehouse. Equally impressed with her, my daughter's ability to sell an enormous amount of lemonade. Is that like <laughs> a tax write-off for your eight-year-old you, daughter? Yeah, you. I mean, you can do the forms. For you? Yeah, <laughs> not, for, not for her. <laughs> no. Um, so, no, it was super fun. We probably had, what, a couple thousand people come through yeah, the door? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it was a lot. Yep. It was nonstop action. It certainly was yeah. nonstop action. <laughs> yeah, it was. there was a lot going on. Um, and with that, I don't think... Uh, I don't know. Do you have anything else before we get into actual news? I don't think so. We're going to have some bike promotions coming up, but less online and more in our brick-and-mortar stores, uh, both in Pinnacle and Basin down in Killington. So if you happen to be local, keep an eye out for that stuff. It will mostly be announced through social media. Um, some sort of prizes. There's There's been talk about what you could potentially win. Sounds good to me. Yeah, winning stuff is always cool. Um, and yeah, I think with that, we'll get right into the news. First topic of the week, we've got a breakdown of different FIS topics. So the first topic is actually three topics. <laughs> Today, this week is top eight Fridays. <laughs> um, so first is uh, the FIS has officially sold media rights to Infront. Infront is the company who's been contracted to handle media production and broadcasting and all that stuff. This is sort of complicated from like a legal perspective. And I think this describes it well enough. It's a good thing. So <laughs> I think it's important to start there. It might sound bad because we've been talking a lot about the FIS trying to like centralize the broadcasting rights and all that stuff. Yeah. So the title kind of makes it sound like the opposite of that, but basically they've just reached an, a really good agreement, the FIS and this company in front, where FIS will retain more control over the actual media production. So how it's shot, stories told, that kind of stuff. Yeah. In front is actually going to own the broadcasting rights. So it'll be interesting to see what comes out of this, if we feel a difference. I just, I don't understand how hard it is for me to like turn on my TV and put it on a channel where the World Cup ski race is on. Yeah, like, it's hard. That's all I want to do. Yeah. You still I don't want to subscribe to anything. Yeah, I don't want to buy anything. Well, 
I'm sick of it. I just want to turn the TV on and yeah. have the race come on. I don't know that that's going to happen immediately. Yeah, I didn't think so. I think you're still going to have to subscribe to something, and my guess is that that something is still going to be Peacock. Yep. But who knows? Oh, well. It's like the same conversation or similar conversations in the golf world. They're just never going to get more people involved if they keep yeah. making them pay for it and jump through hoops. On like Friday for the British Open, the last hour of the broadcast, you had to switch back to Peacock. And there was just like constant jokes of Nuts. like, what a slap in the yeah. face of like people tuning in to watch your program. And then right. the, like the end of the round, you get kicked off the channel and got to go to a... Yeah, paid subscription-based app. I mean, that's a little excessive. <laughs> you know, we're, we're certainly victims of like wanting instant gratification with this stuff, but like that's that's a little strange. It was pretty strange. Yeah, but it's not dissimilar to right. kind of what you have to the hoops you have to jump through for ski racing right. or any ski content. It really bothers me actually. Mid now I'm getting all fired <laughs> up. <laughs> um, I don't know what what's up with like. Are there any? Do any of you work for NBC? Like, what's up with the ability or lack, lack of ability of. to watch replays on Peacock? Like, there's like a live event, yeah, and then it just disappears, and then like a month later it comes back as a replay. Yeah, I don't. What's never up with even, that? I never even get that far because I don't. I'm not subscribing to Peacock. Like, I want to watch the event that happened in Europe yesterday. Right. Not a month ago. I don't care what <laughs> happened a month ago. God. Maybe they'll fix it. I don't, I don't know. I'm Anyways, not optimistic. we've <laughs> wasted way too much time already. There's all sorts of stuff we have to talk about. Second mini FIS topic. Uh, they will be actually testing for fluorocarbons in wax for this upcoming season. So those were banned. What, prior to this past season? Or are we two seasons in? I think uh, we're one season into four. Yeah, I didn't catch bands. that. Um, so it's officially been banned. Uh, you can't use it in any FIS ski races. You can't use it anywhere in Europe, period, I don't think. I don't know if the United States has like passed the same laws. Um, they didn't test for it. So it was basically just kind of like honor system. Right. Don't use this superior product. And everyone was like, okay, <laughs> wink. Um, so they will be testing before this upcoming season, or I would assume it's like drug testing, just unannounced, random right. testing. Scrape a ski and put it in a vial and see what happens. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Do you swab a ski? I think so. I think, you're, I think that's what you'll see. That's pretty cool. Um, so that'll be interesting. See if anybody gets banned for Right, Floral so busted. Use. Yeah, <laughs> it's exciting. Uh, and then Lake Louise races have officially been canceled, uh, mostly citing financial issues that were compounded by the fires earlier this month, but not a huge surprise. Even like a year ago, there was some speculation that they might not happen this year. It just seemed like it was seldomly run. Seldomly successful. And successful. Yeah. Just seems pretty early for that type of totally. event. Well, officially canceled, Bob. Okay. And then uh, this one's tough from a pronunciation perspective. I definitely like got this guy's name perfect one top five Fridays once upon a time. We're just going to call him Andre for lack of uh, better ability to pronounce French. Polish? Polish. Any foreign name. <laughs> uh, so Andre Bar Bargiel. That sounded good. Pretty sure that was good. He has completed the Caracorum Quadfecta. He is the first person ever to successfully summit and ski the four highest peaks in the Caracorum region that all rise above 8,000 vertical feet. Meters. And, yeah, definitely <laughs> meters. That was a huge typo. <laughs> Or 8,000 meters in elevation. It could be 8,000 vertical feet. No, it's 8,000 meters, 8, meters in elevation. Meters in elevation. Yes, thank yeah, you for okay. that correction. 8,000 feet like wouldn't really be that impressive. Yeah. <laughs> be like, cool, dude. It would have to be a really steep <laughs> mountain. <laughs> That's great. Good work. Uh, yeah, my American mind yep. just was like, meters? But no. that they must mean feet. Imperial. Yeah. 
You don't really measure. I've never heard anybody refer to mountain height in yards. No, that doesn't happen. <laughs> we'll start a new thing. <laughs> How many yards tall is Mount Mansfield? Like 1,300? It's like 1,300 yards 1300 above sea level. Yards. <laughs> Anyways, so we've talked about this guy before. He is incredibly impressive. It's hard for me to relate to really anything that he does. Uh, the closest that I've come to that is like, I don't know, being on the top of Mount Hood or like being on the top of Mount Washington in a sketchy wind storm. Right. Or like driving up the toll road on Mount Mansfield and then hiking across the ridge <laughs> to the top. Yeah, I feel like I've been closer than that. <laughs> yeah. I've also never done that. Oh, it's pretty fun. Driving to the top of the nose. Top of the toll road and then walking over. Yeah. I called Josh the other day and he had just biked up toll road. I mean, that's a climb. Yeah. It's like three and a half miles, something like that, right? Yeah. Up. I thought that was kind of cool. Yep. Good after work activity. So congratulations. Um, and then I still feel like we're wasting a lot of time. So moving right along, uh, two Japanese resorts are to be linked by chairlift in an effort to become one of the largest resorts in Japan. And boy, what a trend. Right. Just taking notes from Stow Smugs. Right. Alpine Palisades. I really want to be like a Japanese fly on the wall out there to hear if it's the same like reaction right. as like the Stow Smugs gondola connection. Yeah. Like are people pissed? I bet they're all fired up. You would think so. Yeah. Like why would it be different there? I don't know. Um, another thing that we thought was really interesting is these resorts look very small. Yeah. And like to be fair, I don't have a sense of scale or scope as to right they don't look big from the google map or when you zoom in the mountains are big and then the ski resorts seem to be a smaller portion yeah i think of that's, those mountains and i think that's just that's how it is yeah so to make to call this like the biggest resort i don't, I don't know i feel like we're used to just these oversized Massive. mega resorts right. like where you were just in whistler like right that's just an enormous place. Totally. So I can't imagine that this is I don't think competing it's on that close. level. No, but pretty interesting nonetheless. Yep. It's fun to look them up. It's Alt, Alt's Bandai Alt Snow Park and Nakoma Snow Park. If you're interested, go do some scrolling around yeah. on Google Maps. No, it's fun to look around and yeah. see what's what out there. And then we've got an article from SkiRacing.com highlighting Stella Johansson um, and mostly her path onto the U.S. ski team C team. Uh, pretty interesting. This has been kind of an ongoing theme here on Top 5 Fridays and just in the ski racing world. Um, her path to success as a ski racer was a little bit different than the traditional path. So she had... Um, it sounded like she had she was a shoe in on the Dartmouth ski team yep. was recruited for the Dartmouth team, and instead of going to college or instead of racing at Dartmouth, she moved to Sweden where she has family uh, and just raced in Europe. Um, so kind of cool to see just a different different way yeah. onto the U.S. U.S. ski team. Uh, her first season was a bit of a struggle, and then last season was quite a breakthrough season. She had a great finish, uh, and now she finds herself on that USC team. And Bob, you had you did some interesting research on what it means to be on the USC team. Yeah, and B, which is yeah. you pay your own way in terms of travel expenses. Wild. And then you gotta you gotta win <laughs> in order right. to get paid. That's your only source yeah. of revenue. Yep, is winning. And skiing related and potentially sponsors. Yeah, it seems like these days there's more avenues for athletes to make money in different ways. But could have a YouTube channel. Exactly. So, yeah, I was surprised about that. That you know, if you're not on that A team, you're on the hook for your travel expenditures. Yeah, which can they can add they up. They can add up, especially if you're chasing points or chasing the win. Totally, it's a lot of travel. Yep. Um, and then finally, we have our edits of the week. So first up, we have short little edit from Gibberish, uh, Dog Days with Henry Robarge. Um, I thought the coolest thing about this is he's on that new ARV 94. Yep, notice that. I w can guarantee that you're going to see more and more impressive park footage on those new ARVs. 
And then we've got another short edit from Hunter Hess and Chris Colgan. Uh, this was mostly all from Woodward Copper. Um, just another kind of fun, loving summer park skiing edit. Mm -hmm. Makes me miss Whistler right. already. <laughs> Uh, I'm like, I, I was doing that. Uh, and then we've got the trailer for Abstract from Faction Skis. Uh, Faction is a great manufacturer of skis, and they also produce some incredible ski movies. I was I on their website these past few days doing the writing for the ski test, and yep. like their top menu is like skis, environment, Media. film. Yeah. You know, like it's... Yeah. on their top menu. Yeah. So it kind of is pretty cool showing the no, priority I, aspect of that company. I agree 100%. And I like I honestly think that Faction has produced some of the best ski movies in the past yeah. half a decade. Yep, good quality, good skiing. Yeah, yeah. The, you know what it reminds me of? Remember like the old Helly Hansen movies? No. No. They were like legitimately really good. Yeah. I think it was a little different where like they bought some footage in those Helly Hansen movies. You know, like they would buy like clips from MSP. Right. I'm totally speculating, but I'm pretty sure that happened. But I definitely remember like getting the new Helly Hansen movie and being excited about it, <laughs> which is like a weird thing. Yeah. That is a weird <laughs> sentence to say in right. 2023. Yeah. But it happened. Um, and that's it. That's all I got. Club Championship at Copley Country Club this weekend. Good That's luck. The real news. All right. <laughs> yeah. Wish wish me luck. I'm probably going to play horribly because I didn't swing a golf club for three weeks because I went to Whistler. Maybe I'll just be well rested. So far, that has not proven to <laughs> result in good golf. Well, you'll hit your stride in the fourth hole. I told Josh I'm either going to shoot a 76 or an 86. No in between. No, <laughs> nothing in between. Yeah, I seem incapable to yeah. have a <laughs> mellow, consistent, yeah, risk-free round of golf right now. Well, that's the hard part, isn't it? Yeah, but I, that's like yeah. my strength. I, right now, I cannot do it. Yeah. Well, good luck anyway. Thanks. Um, and yeah, hope everyone has a fantastic weekend, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye. <laughs>